Hi, welcome back to the channel. Why does everyone keep going on and on about the importance of reaching your first 100K? What makes this milestone so difficult and yet at the same time so extremely important? Stick around till the end of the video and let's find out. Investor Charlie Munger famously emphasized the importance of reaching this milestone as follows. The first 100K is but you gotta do it. I don't care what you have to do. If it means walking everywhere and not eating anything that wasn't purchased with a coupon, find a way to get your hands on 100K. After that, you can ease off the gas a little bit. The quote highlights the difficult challenge of accumulating significant savings and investments and specifically of crossing this uh, particular milestone, after which the benefits of compounding should become clearer to the investor. Despite living in one of the wealthiest countries in the world, only 14% of Americans have more than $100,000 saved in their retirement accounts. Incredibly, almost 80%, so four-fifths of Americans, have less than $50,000 saved for retirement. And I want to be extremely clear here. I'm very aware that for many individuals, their income simply does not allow them to have any room for substantial savings. However, these staggering statistics do shed some light on other behavioral factors at play. For many, a lack of discipline, dedication to a financial strategy, financial literacy, and or at leading a lifestyle that goes beyond their means could explain this shortfall. Firstly, it's important to remind ourselves of the non-linear nature of long-term investments and of the magic of compounding. And compounding refers to the process of generating earnings through your investments that are then reinvested to produce further earnings, leading to a non-linear trajectory of exponential growth. In other words, you're not only earning interest on your original investments, but also on the interest that were already earned. Let's check out some examples. As observed in the figure, investing steadily $10,000 per year, which is depicted in blue, produces total returns that are represented by the exponential shaped orange curve. Proceeding consistently in this way, you would reach approximately $1 million after 31 years and $2 million after 40 years of investing, assuming a 7% return on investment. Unfortunately, the exponential nature of this curve only begins to be clear after some years have passed. Notice that the initial years of saving and investing may seem to follow a pretty linear trajectory and are a reason why some may be discouraged by the results at first. Considering this pace of yearly contributions, it would take someone 7.8 years to reach the first $100,000 invested. The good news is that it only speeds up from here. The second 100K invested would only take 5.1 years. The third would take 3.8 years. The fourth, three years. The fifth 100K, 2.5 years. You get the idea, wealth accumulation starts to become easier and easier until it really becomes ridiculously easy after a few decades have passed. Notice that in year 40, the interest from your portfolio contributed 13 times more than your annual contributions. By year 40, 80% of the accumulated value of your portfolio came from interest and only 20% from your contributions. For those who are making huge sacrifices to reach their first 100K, we have some good news. The power of compounding allows you to potentially moderate, to potentially relax your savings rate and the amount that you invest periodically on a monthly or yearly basis, and still reach very reasonable outcomes over time. Let's consider the following example. Let's assume that after the 7.8 years it took us to reach the first 100K milestone, we then decide to reduce our periodic investments in half to only 5,000 per year instead of the original 10,000. So as we can see in this graph in dark blue, we are already starting with the 100K you would still reach millionaire status after about 36 years instead of the 31 it would take you in the first scenario. Five years is not that big of a difference, considering that the effort invested in the second scenario is probably more achievable for most. The key takeaway is that we should attempt to front load as much as possible our investing efforts when we are young so that we can allow the compounding to do the heavy lifting in the later years. Do everything you possibly can now to reach that first 100k invested and you're likely setting yourself up for a very comfortable life later on. Reaching financial success requires discipline and planning. As we've covered in detail in previous videos, I would recommend setting up a pay yourself first budget, which allows you to boost your savings and to optimize your expenses. If today's video and examples provided you with some extra motivation on your quest to reaching this important milestone, please give us a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel. Also, check out here a dedicated playlist on personal finance topics that you may enjoy watching. Take care and see you there.